Hi everybody, welcome back to the den and uh, Simply Scenery's the 3D Forge that we have here. Uh, for those that have been following us on our Facebook group, um, you know that I set out a um, let's print our scenery collection in resin, uh, which at first I thought, oh, that's going to be quite an easy thing to do. And uh, well, what is it, four weeks later, finally we have the 182 pieces of uh, the scenery collection. As you know, here at uh, 3D Forge, we print scenery for collections for Gloomhaven. And they come in three different styles. They come in 120 pieces, 182 pieces, and 235 pieces. Um, the uh, last one being the ones with the little floor tiles and so on. And as everybody knows, all of your scenery in Gloomhaven is represented with cardboard tokens. And there they all are, everything. And, you know, uh, if you're into the game, then you know all about that. If you want to know more about the game and what we offer with uh, scenery printing, then have a look at our my video that I've made for uh, going through the scenery. Anyway, so I thought, what a great idea. Um, as I had some uh, resin lying around, let's just see how different it was between this and um, PLA uh, just doing normal 3D printing plastic and um, well a bit of a mixed emotions really um, with it um, so let's uh, come back and, uh, and find out what the what the deal was so first of all for those looking to get into 3D printing uh, in resin uh, you're going to need a resin printer. The most popular one here is the Anycubic uh, Photon. Roughly coming in at around about £370-£380 here in the UK. I'm sure there's a bit cheaper in dollars over in, um, in America and other places. And for price entry point that is probably the best printer um, that you can get for the money. There's not a huge amount of them. Um, it uses what we call shadow masking, so it uses like an LCD display to put the layer on and so on. And it's a resin and the item actually comes out of the resin as, as it's printed. However, the resin plate is extremely small and I'll show you. We'll just take that resin plate off there. So that is the plate size for where your print's going to go on. As you can see, there's not a lot of space to put a lot of stuff. So. One of the main kickbacks is that for a vast collection you had a lot of print runs going on. Some of the other things you're going to need is you're going to need uh, a ultrasonic jewellery cleaner uh, like this one and you're going to need uh, a big bottle of isopropanol that's 99% uh, so that's the cleaner for it because when the prints come out of the vat um, they aren't, they've sort of got it, a, a coating on them still, so you've got to get that coating off. You don't have to get that coating off, but invariably that coating could be filling in some of the detail. So you put it into an ultrasonic cleaner and that will get it out of the fine uh, little bits. And to be honest with you, should I have one of them? I got one to try it out, but to be honest with you, you could get away with just having isopropanol in a, in a, in a bowl with a, with, a, with a toothbrush and just cleaning through there. However, with the things like the trees that I do, there's a skulls and there's all sorts of uh, dressings at the bottom and, and that, you know, that sort of helps the uh, jewellery cleaner will help get through to that and nicely clean those off. Um, so it's either one. So you're going to need one of those. You're also going to need a copious supply of these and you're also going to need a UV lamp. Okay, and the reason that you need the UV lamp is that when the resins come out, uh, they are sort of not so much fully set, you just need to put them under UV 
and that will just harden off the tops of them. Now, you could just use normal sunshine. Unfortunately, here in the UK, we don't have such a thing as sunshine, and as such, um, you know, it's in, when I'm filming this, it's like the middle of winter, so um, there wasn't the opportunity. So I use that. However, you've got to be really careful using that because you, I don't think you can see too well on there, but that one's sort of very brown. Essentially, it's sunburned. All right, so I sunburned that one, which was a bit of a shame, really. And some of the others um, had a little bit of a tinge to them. One of the other processes I used to do was I used to put them in the isopropanol and then used to rinse them off with water um, just to give that rinse off. Now, I stopped doing that after a while and it did leave a little bit more crystal clarity. I think some of the water was absorbed into the slightly soft top layer of the product and uh, of the item. And as such, um, you know, it made a bit of a cloudy thing, although some of it cleared over the time. So there we have it. Now, why? Well, I was interested to see whether we we're going to get some much more stunning detail from the items over things. And yes, in a lot of the cases, the detail is absolutely stunning over PLA. Um, for real, you know, real quality. Uh, things like the tables and chairs that are done, you can actually see the grain so much better in the, in the uh, items. The bookcases a little bit more. The chests um, have a lot more detail on. The stairs have a lot more detail. Our new totems. These new totems print quite well, but in resin, obviously, they, they come out really well as well. Um, but... In an overall nature, I would have set out this whole big collection that resin only really made probably about 10%, 15% of it that much more stunning. And you've got to ask yourself, unless you're a professional painter, are you going to use that detail? And, and I've got to say that probably not. However, as a collection and... Uh, having it just set out like this is something like pretty cool about not bothering painting is actually just having these as they are as games pieces because they're solid they're absolutely solid don't forget in PLA we set um, you know it's the, it's a, there's a shell and it's hollow inside in, 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 in most of the big models these are absolutely solid and you know they do look really nice the chests and everything else going out like that um, initial print problems, there wasn't really a great deal. Um, th the problem I had with the previous uh, photon for this, it was an absolute pain. The early photons, I say early photons, I say early photons because I have one that was about six months old and it constantly had memory issues. It was an absolute nightmare. I thought if I'm going to go to this now, I'm going to really struggle because it kept having error memories all the time and it was absolutely, and you can go on the websites, you can go on this and the other and Wow, it was just never solvable. They did a, a firmware update, which didn't really do it for me. I kept getting them anyway. That one went out. That one's over in the corner. I thought, right, let's just go and buy another one. We bought. I bought another one. And throughout all of this, it completely worked out. Everything just didn't stop. It was one load after another. I mean, the actual time involved, the time involved with this, I lost count. I lost count. It was it was it was a labour of love. It had to be, you know, one plate off, clean that plate, set the next plate. The actual print runs themselves per se are slightly uh, are much quicker than um, uh, PLA uh, normal 3D printed. Um, but there is the clean up. You've got to get them off the plate. You've then got to get them washed down. You've got to get them dried off and things like that. So and under the UV if that's uh, what you're going to do with them. So from that perspective. Um, a, a lot more time because you know, and it's messy it's messy trust me you need an area where you can work the resin is sticky horrible stuff it seems to get everywhere there's a lot of maintenance to keep making sure the things if you do get a couple of bad prints you've got to clean the vat out scrape it out it, 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 you know filter the liquid and you know I'm not trying to put people off but there is a please be aware of what you're getting yourself into but if you're after one-off prints of certain items and you want high quality, then absolutely tickety-boo. Now, I did start uh, printing the monsters for Gloomhaven. And a lot of them I'd already post on the Facebook page. So come and join us on the Facebook page. Um, I'm going to re revisit that. But what I did find with it, with well, the resin was really um, brittle 
and I'm, you know, without really looking after these things. I mean, the, the detail on someone was absolutely exquisite, but you're going to need some pretty big, good storage cases and have these as get. Would they work as gaming pieces around a table? Yeah, you know, you know what you, you know, who you play with and, 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 and things like that. And some of them were just absolutely, and they would demand some really good quality painting as well. So that's there but looking over this whole sort of crystal collection um it was really really cool thing what would i do differently had i want to put them well um i would get some pigments that's a start off because all this is in sort of crystal clear um item um you can get pigments now that you can color the resin with and <clears throat> so you know we could start doing grays for the stones and and the and the, the rocks and the pits and everything like that and the doors could have different pigments and things you've got the fog so as you've got dark and light fog some of the pigment could go in there um, which is which is pretty cool now one of the other reasons for doing this was because I'm doing a lot of experimentation in um, resin fill and looking to see whether uh, a lot of the collection can in fact be resin resin um, resin cast and by using this sort of stuff these are perfect casts so you'd print this perfect cast We've then got all the moulding. That's a completely separate issue with what I'm doing. Um, and not all the pieces mould either. So there's those issues. And it's whether or not it's actually viable to, 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 to mould them on there. So <clears throat> what else was there a problem with? Cost. Cost. It's a fortune. You are looking here at this 182 piece set. Around about two and a half litres of resin, two and a half litres of resin. Half a litre currently is around 32 to 34 pounds for clear. I haven't seen it anywhere cheaper, probably over there in the States, if you're across the pond, you can see things cheaper, but you're gonna be looking at about two and a half litres and that is if everything goes to plan okay. You may have some uh, bad, bad prints, hopefully you won't. I didn't get any bad prints in this but two and a half litres. So 30, 40, you know, go 120, 100, 100, about 140 pounds, yeah, for this, uh, for, for, for this, for this, for this collection, which is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for it. However, it looks fantastic. It looks exquisite. I'm really pleased with the detail. I've got plans for this, so please subscribe, and um, I'm going to come up with an idea for what where this is this particular set as it sits is going now. Um, I don't see that uh, we'll be printing in resin as a commercial thing um, for people. However, um, we're always I'm always open to commissions, and if you do want to have a uh, printed set, then that would be absolutely fine. Give us a shout. But I think more so that some of these pieces are going to be picked out and used for, um, uh, uh, you know, resin casting. And uh, that's where we, I can experiment a little bit more, which is a little way off at the moment because I'm not getting the results that... Uh, really. So really, uh, it's always going to be PLA for the minute, for the, for the time being. But there we have it, the resin print challenge. Um, keep uh, in touch with us, join us on the Facebook page, subscribe to YouTube. Um, the reason being is that we, I'm going to be starting the resin print for the monsters as well. There's a lot more monsters come out through Thingiverse for people. And I'd like to show people what they might look like on resin print. I've done a lot before. So if you're into all that, then super. Like I say, message me if you have any questions at all. Anything that you want to ask um, about um, resin printing and any pitfalls and things like that and how to prep and so on and so forth. But until that time, thank you very, very much for watching and have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.